Okay. So Justin, give us a little bit of a routine on the heavy bag. And that's it. So he's working his combinations and he's got good head movement, go, both going into the combination and coming out of the combination, in and out. That's it. Good job. Work your jab a little bit more, please. That's it. So now if you watch the footwork on this combination, you see the transfer of weight all the time. And, and the thing is, punching off the correct foot at the right time is, is, is again, the vital position. When you're throwing the right hand, you pivot it with your right foot, your left foot is catching you. On the left hook, the weight's back on your right, right foot, you pivot it with your, with, your, with your left foot right through the target, okay? When you throw your uppercuts, it's in your back, in your back. Okay, and of course, the jab is a step in, step in if you're going to your opponent. But on the other end, if you're using the jab, if your opponent's kind of stronger than you and backing you up, you back up and, and use it as a defensive mode. So, let me try a couple more combinations. No. Right, double jab right here. Good, let me see again, pivot strong. Good, now the vital part of that right hand is the pivot on the right foot. And if you notice, right through his target. Again, see, when he finishes the right hand, his chin's protected by his shoulder, right there. And he gets that right hand back to his chin like a piston. The only dangerous spot is when you're bringing the hand back. If you bring it back slowly, I'll go on the V in the middle there and catch you. So it goes out like a piston and comes back like a piston. It's very quick. Right there. Good, again. Good, now throw the left hook behind that. Now you see the transfer of weight there on his feet. Okay, he's pivoting with the right hand, then he's dropping the weight back, and he's pivoting on, on the left foot and catching himself with the right foot. Again, right hand, left hook. Good job, again. Good, after that combination, I want you to roll under my right hand. Good, again, under my right hand, under. Good, now, he's creating a situation here where he landed one, two, and he's imagining the opponent coming back with the counter shot of a right hand. He's going under the right hand and coming up with the hook. Again, he's, he, head. But he's creating a situation, and this is how you work the heavy bag, okay? You don't go out there just recklessly and just start swinging on the bag. You think about it, okay? You throw a combination, you know which way to roll. Your opponent's coming back with the right hand, you go under that. It comes back with the left hook, you go under that. But you want to create situations, okay? And on all three of the bags, there's always situations. There's always an opponent in front of you, okay? Because this is a, a, um, this game of, of engagement. And the thing is, um, you know, you're, it's good, great when you're throwing punches, but you got to worry that he's going to throw them back, okay? So give me that one-two hook under again. Okay. Jab, one-two, set up with the jab, one-two hook, boom, and then he fires the left hook. The, the correct counter on the, see, when he makes my right hand miss, one-two hook, boom, he's wide open there. Now he cracked my body or my chin. Depending on where you are in the fight, early in the fight, I would say you go to the body shot. A little bit later in the fight, when the guy's more fatigued, you go right for the chin shot and take him out. Give me one more time. One, two, hook. One, one shot. One head. Head shot. <coughs> Boom. Again. <coughs> Good job, okay? And that's how to hit the heavy bag correctly, okay? You, again, you punches, you balance, okay? Now, again, when we, when we move around the bag, you want to move primarily we're right here in the fight, so we're going to move to our left more than we will our right. But now to keep, him, to keep your opponent honest, we better move back to the right also to keep him honest because you can't just move one way. So basically we're going to work around the bag with our footwork, step into our left. So we cut back to the right, right hand, left side. So work to your left, Justin. That's it. One, two. Okay, one, two, step to your right. Okay, left hook. Good. Set up again. Yeah. Bang, there you go. So when you're moving side to side like that, you're, you're not right in front of your opponent, you're moving your head, a little movement in the heavy bag, you get good balance at all times, and punching off the right foot at the right time. I have a question. It's important, is it important to want to always go under when you're stepping off on your angles? When you're stepping off on your angles, it's always a good idea to go under the shot, okay? Because 
you could run into a shot just by accident and you let me get lucky and you know what luck should never be involved in boxing all right you, you, there's no way in a professional boxing match that luck should be involved all right so everything has a purpose so as Justin says when he's landing those shots and he's going under he steps off to the side it's a very good move but you you've got to make sure that the feet go uh, slide together when Justin's going under one two boom He's stepping and he's sliding with that foot and his balance is good and he's going to land a left hook. And the thing is, I have no comeback, all right? And that's the important part of that, uh, that type of move. It's a one-two under, boom, I've got this and he's got that. He's going to win the race. It's a very good move. Um, there's a little more advanced on your angles, working side to side on the bag and you're using your angles. So when you do step off to the side though, either when you're stepping off to the right or left, it's always a good idea just to go under. Even if I don't throw, it, it, it doesn't slow you down and it doesn't hurt you to move your head. It's always a good position to do. So we go one, two hook on the other side, Justin. One, two left hook. You step out. There. Again, I've got, I've got no offense. I've got to turn to him. If I turn to him, he's going to hit me. If I walk away, nothing gained. But, at least I did. but most people have a tendency to follow their opponents. And when that happens, they usually get knocked out because I get to turn right into his shot. But I have experience a little bit, so I, I, I don't think I would fall for that move. I hope not. <laughs> but I would step out on that shot. But then again, he would win the exchange. And that's what it's all about is winning the exchanges in boxing. And one thing I'd like to go into a little bit is uh, one of my trainer, Eddie Futch's favorite drills. Eddie used to like when I heard a person to sit down and set my shots, not to just swing wildly at him and possibly be in danger of getting caught. A lot of guys, they hurt a person, they just go wild, just start trying to kill the guy, not, you know, just swinging. And when you're swinging like that and you're not really watching your shots, you're putting yourself in line to be caught. And uh, you've seen it many times. The guy hurts another guy and he starts, he's, he's going in for the kill to, to, for the finish and he walks into a shot and gets knocked out himself. And again, that should never happen in boxing. So. Eddie used to make me go a whole round after my, my, I go like three rounds in the heavy bag and then my fourth round would be a round of power shots. And what I'm talking about is just separating your shots a little bit. You hurt your opponent, he's on the ropes, and you just want to place your shots and be accurate with the shots. You don't want to be wild with the shots. So Justin, of course, knows this drill because I trained him for many fights. And uh, the thing is, you, you, you want to go with power shots a whole Three minutes of power shots, a great workout, okay? And the thing is, if you can't do it three minutes at once, just, again, you can go as long as you can and build yourself up. So on the power shots, they're separated somewhat, okay? You know, bang, the right hand lands here. Bang, bang, bang. Every shot's a power shot. You turn, you got the guy hurt. You're not going to be flailing recklessly. You're going to place your shots and see the openings. And I'm going to give Justin a couple minutes of power shots. Show him how it's done, Justin. See, this is very important when you hurt somebody not to just go crazy. Place your shots and see where they're going. See, Justin, he's always got his foot work under him. His balance is good. His punches are sharp. He's punching through his target and he's using his body weight. Okay, as you can see, Justin's a great puncher. He's very strong, strong heavyweight, a little bit short, but he makes up for it in his power. And you see the transfer of weight in his feet at all times and the good balance at all times. And that's basically the way to hit a heavy bag. You want to work it, it's worth strength and power. Technique is more like the mitts nowadays where I use the heavy bag as a strength and power tool and endurance tool. Because three minutes on this bag is no joke, it's not easy. So, but the thing is, you want to build yourself up to that point and then build yourself up to a point where you can do three or four rounds in the heavy bag and then maybe one round of power shot. And to punch off the right foot in, in, against the heavy bag. You want to use that full power. And Justin's, you know, he, he's a strong guy, but he's not punching with just his arm. He's punching with all his body weight. So when he hits somebody, he gets their attention. One, two. Again. Good. The, the, best, the, the most important thing on that right hand is that pivot in the back foot. Now, from this position, we're going to learn how to th throw a left hook behind the right hand. So, 
the jabs here, the right hand's right down the middle, and the left hook is right across the center, right here. Palm facing the floor, elbow up, following through. I see a lot of guys throwing left hook right like this, not, not coming across with their elbow, and they don't get the follow through. So you have to have that follow through, okay? Because you're punching through your target and not at your target. So it's one, two, three. Left hook here, eyes still on target right there. If a good hook misses, the elbow lands, okay? I'm not saying be a dirty fighter or anything like that, but it's the tendency of a hook is to follow through with the, with the elbow. So one, two, three, right there. Good balance. And Justin's going to again show us that, one, that, that over. That one? Yes. That's it again. Now, if you watch Justin's feet on that combination, you'll see the, the transfer of weight, which is very important. Again, that's where your punch of power comes from, from your legs, hip, shoulder. Okay, you're hitting with all your body weight. You see that pivot on that left hook? It's very, it's very quick, sharp pivot. Turn the punch over. It's a beautiful shot. Uh, again, the left hook to me is the most dangerous punch in boxing because the right hand is a little bit too is further away from your chin, so it's a little bit hard to land. But the left hook is right here, right there. So Justin his hands up there. It's a very short shot. Right, you hit a per person on the chin like that, and lights out. It's it's over. So Justin. Show me again, the one, two, three. Again. Good job, again. Good, so those are your three basic over the top punches. The next two punches we're gonna go over the uppercuts, okay? A little bit different, and um, with your punches over, remember, your palm is always facing the floor when it comes out, when, when, when you land, okay? You get it back right to where it came from. One, two, three. Right there, palm again, facing the floor, turn that hand over. You want to make that twist part of your punch. It's, a, it's the explosion on the shot, it's quickness. It makes the sharpness of the punch. You just don't want to turn it over slowly. It's very sh quick and sharp, okay? It's a quick movement. And now we're going to work on the uppercuts, Justin. So if you're just going to show me, get it going a little bit for me fast. So as you can see, the important part is she's keeping her hands up at all times. She's not dropping her hands. So when she's in the late rounds of a fight, a 10-round fight, she's not going to get fatigued and her, her hands aren't going to be down around, around her stomach. They're still going to be up. And again, having good defense, having your hands up is a, a great way to have good defense. Just by having them, you're going to block a lot of shots. All right. So again, we get a little more advanced with the speed bag, okay? And we get we get we get that first two two ways down to hit the hit the bag, and then again it's like an opponent. So I treat it like an opponent. So I'm playing with it. I slip, I go under it. If it hits my head, it's going to hit the back of my head, not the front of my head, because I'm going to keep my chin down, just like I was in a fight. And if a headbutt occurs, it's going to be my head in the back hit, hit me in the back head, not on my eyes and so forth, where I can get cut which happens quite a bit in boxing, okay? So that good head movement, right there, if you, know, you get the back going. Okay, just showing off a little bit. You have a little bit of fun with the bag, you play with it, you land combinations on the bag, just like an opponent, set it up. So, Again, you work the bag, don't let the bag work you. All right, you just want to be nice and loose in that bag. And again, starting off, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that timing, to, to get the timing of that bag. That twos, it's just a little bit tedious, but take your time and you'll achieve it. And then once you learn how to hit this bag, you'll have it forever. Okay, now I'm going to show Francesca how to land the left hook on a speed bag. I'm tired, <laughs> but uh, no. So to I think it's the best place in the gym to learn your left hook because unlike the heavy bag, the heavy bag is hard to learn the left hook on because of the, 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 design, the, the shape of the bag. Okay, you're going to catch it early in the bag. It's not as relevant like, a box, like somebody's chin. This is. It's more like somebody's chin. All right, so I'm going to stand right there. 
So I like to practice my left hook on the bag, and I, I end up, this is where I get my good, uh, I get a good left hook, and this is where I get it from. Okay, so yeah, I just imagine an opponent in front of me. He's right there, his chin's right there. <coughs> and right from that position, you see how short a left hook is. Okay, that's why I like that shot so much. If I had my choice in boxing to have a good right hand or a good left hook, I would pick the left hook because it's easier to land because it's closer to your opponent's face. Simple as that. It's just short motion, you know, the, the bag's here. You're not winding up, pulling back. You just this nice short shot, bang, you turn over quickly on the chin, and when you land that short shot, good things happen. Right there, I missed the bag, but now here. When, when you land the left hook, don't throw the left hook facing the wall, okay? Because I've seen people hit the wall. I've seen people hit the swivel. Again, accuracy, see your target, and, and follow your shot. If you see your target and follow your shot, you'll, you'll, hit the, you'll hit the target every time. It's just like hitting a baseball. You, with your eye on the ball, you'll hit the target. My eye's on your chin. I'm right here. I know that's the spot I want to hit. That's a sweet spot. That's the po point where I'll knock somebody out. I'm not going to miss. I'm, I'm just not going to. It's just because I have experience at it, and my eyes stay focused on it. So, Francesca, I want you to get in position on this bag. Right here, nice boxing stance. And right here. Now, when the bag's coming down, I want you to meet it with your hook, okay? Now, if you hear this noise here, that's not what I want to hear. There was no follow-through in that hook, okay? You want to punch through your opponent. So I'm going to jack it up right into the board. It's going to be a nice quick shot right there. It's a nice short shot, and it's fun to do. Um, I was a boxer, so I like hitting things, I guess. So let's see your case here. So... Now the bag's gonna be right here. Don't don't let it let it bounce and, and meet it with your left hook. All right, keep your eye on the target. That's yeah, better. Follow a little more follow through. There you go. Good. You see it? Good job. Nice pivot. Now follow right through that bag. Don't right th right through the bag. Right through the bag. More, more follow through. There you go. Good job. So you see good technique there. Nice short left hook. She's pivoting with her left foot and keeping her right hand high. Because, when you, again, whenever you throw a left hook at a person, and then, again, I, I love this feedback because I love throwing left hooks, is that, face me, when you throw a left hook at a person, you can be le you, you're going into their hook. So it's very important when you throw a left hook that you keep your right hand high. Because if she blocks my shot and I have my hand down around my chest, she's gonna, the, the common counter for a hook is the hook back. So she's going to, I'm going to run right into her shot with my momentum going towards her and her momentum coming towards me. It usually calls for a knockout, okay? So the thing is, when you're working the bag, you're going to start off by just a simple motion. You're going to work around the bag. And then when you miss, you'll hit a combination, just like an opponent. I'll set up the hook right there, uppercut. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun with the bag. And when I used to fight, I used to be able to pop one, but I'm getting a little old now, older now, so I can't pop it. But anyway, Francesca, just I'm move work on that tonight. Okay. <laughs> the thing is, you want to work around the bag, and again, you control the bag. It's just simple motion and have some fun with it. And again, at first it's going to be a little bit tedious, but once you learn how, you can go to any gym in the world and show off like I just did. Now, okay. when you're hitting this, are you aiming up closer up here? No, right in the sweet spot of the back, okay? So again, your eyes are vital, okay? I, on, again, on, on punching, they say that punches are born and not made. I believe that is true, but I do believe you can improve on your punching, and you can improve on your punching with the accuracy of your punch. And with all your nerve endings being on your chin, when you hit somebody in, in, in the chin, it's like, it's like a light switch going on and off. You have no choice. Your ass hits the floor and you have no choice. You know, if you hit a little higher on the cheek, it's 
not as an effective a shot, and they can absorb that better. You hit somebody on a temple, it's a good shot to land and can really knock the equilibrium off, but it's a hard shot on your hand, and a lot of guys hit the temple like that and they hurt their hands. The sweet spot is going to be the chin, so you, your eyes and your target. So when you focus on this bag, you've got to make sure you are focused right on that sweet spot right there, just like you're an opponent. All right, that's his chin right there. That's the chin, okay? So now from behind you, right in this position, you're going to land it right here, boom, right, and you're right through yeah, the bag. Pretty much right on the title? Yeah, right on the title, okay? Now you hold it up there because that will make it go crooked. Go ahead. Yep, drop it. Now, see, she caught the jet, she caught the bag going away. Remember, you've got to catch the bag when it's coming towards you. There you go. Okay, just take your time. Take your time. Good job. A little more follow through. There you go. See, now that was the right sound I wanted to hear. You followed through that time. It was a nice shot. And the thing is, you follow, you hear that motion. Again, remember when you hear it bounce, you really didn't go, you really didn't drive through your target. When you hear it, when you hear it, when you punch it right into the bag, you feel that right there. It's a rip. So, again, I've had a lot more experience than you do at this. And you, I mean, it's your first day. Yeah. I'm sure you never learned this before. But the thing is, this is a vital, a great spot to learn, to learn your left hook, to work on your left hook. And again, I think it's the most effective punch in the boxing if you perfect it. It's got to be short, crisp, and fast. Okay, and the thing is, you can see by the way we hit this bag that it, it's all of that, okay? It's just a simple motion. Again, when you're boxing somebody, well, our position is here. We're this far away from each other. Bang, I can land the left hook within seconds, and she don't even see it coming. It's the best shot in boxing. Again, I, as a fighter, my best punch is the right hand. But if I had my choice, I would have rather had the left hook. Because when you land the left hook like that on somebody's chin, it's over. Whenever we land a stop, we're in a position to make a punch miss or to throw a punch. Okay, And then we, of course, back and forth and then side to side. A lot of people, when, when they want to move to the right, you get to leave with your right foot and slide over. Okay, But a lot of times, you get the tendency to get a little bit square there. On that. You, have to, you have to fight that motion, okay? So this is where you get drills you, you, uh, of using it more like a box where you use the whole ring and um, go side to side, front and back, and keep that balance at all times, okay? So now when you're stepping forward, you lead with your left foot and stepping up with your right if you're a right-handed fighter. And then if you're southpaw, of course, it's the opposite. So moving back, you go with your right foot and slide your left foot forward, back, back. You go. Now we move to our my right, your left, okay. Step, one step, now step, step. Good. Again, you never want to end up in this position parallel. It's always good balance right here. So we're just going to move move together a little bit, and um, I'm going to lead the dance just just for now, just for experience wise. And I want you to stay with me, okay? Come closer. That's it. So the footwork is very important. You see, whenever I'm here, I'm always in position. She comes at me. Going the same direction that you're going. Yes. So a good position to be in, and I'll, I'll call this online, is when you box me, box me. So when my lead foot is between Francesca's legs and her lead foot is between mine, we're, we're online. What I call online is where you can be hit. What takes us offline is head movement and a little bobbing and weaving, okay? But when we're in this position, we're, she's right on line for me to, for me to strike her, but on the other hand, she's, I'm right in line for her to strike me. So this position here is where, where you want to be. So when you step in with your jab, it's right there, right there, and then right back to where it came from. You shoot the jab, good, step, step, good, again. Now step back, again, step, step, step. So the jab is used coming forward as uh, a range finder. It's probably the most important punch in boxing. And uh, again, if the jab doesn't land, nothing else will. But when the jab, when, when you get into, when the jab does land and you're in, you're in striking area for your other shots to follow, um, that's when you want to.
right hand, your left token, you rest your combinations with that, of course. So the thing is, but if the jab's short and doesn't reach me, there's no way the right hand is going to reach me either. So don't waste your time by throwing the right hand and try to get lucky with me. Okay, make sure the jab starts landing first and get, that'll get you a range. It'll get you in trouble and it'll get you out of trouble. Moving in with the, with the jab, offensively, get in your range. Okay, then moving back with the jab, using more defensively. Just, there you go. Good, good. <laughs> now, as you notice, when I'm coming forward, my feet are always in position. I, I step and slide up, and, and Francesca is stepping with the right foot and sliding her left foot back in position. Good job. So, and um, again, you, you, your feet always have to work together. So it's very important. And uh, we'll get into some uh, punishments right now, and uh, we'll get a few combinations and how, how, how best use, to use the punishments. Um, when I was when I was fighting, I was the last fighter that Eddie caught on the mitts because he he was getting a little bit older, you know. And uh, again, he he was still training Rick Bow when he was 90 years old, so he had a very great long 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 lasting career. So he was the last guy that he taught me how to catch on the mitts, and uh, I'm going to teach it to you. All right, the punch mitts, um, really a good tool, I think, in boxing uh, because my fighters, um, when they get ready for world title fights, we have the liberty of, of knowing the opponents and we can study their moves. And um, most of my fighters, they don't watch a lot of the tapes, like James Tony's and Pacquiao. They, they watch it maybe once or twice. They watch the guy and just get a general feel for, for, for what he, his style is and so forth. And I'm not a real big fan of, on them watching films too much because styles make fights and you know they're watching these guys and usually, usually the, the tapes of them fighting good fights and, and look, looking really good in these fights. Um, and I really don't believe that I should, uh, my fighter should make adjustments to fight, his, to fight his style. I'd rather control the situation and have my fighter to get him to fight our fight and control the situation. But there are certain moves that I will look you know, similarities or bad habits that he may have to, to, we can take advantage of. And then when I watch the tape and I, I kind of learn this guy's moves and his style, I can, I can duplicate that on the mitts. And that, that's what I'm um, getting ready for. This, this is where the strategy comes from for, for, for my fighters is on the mitts because I'll, I'll simulate what this guy will do. You know, when you make this move, he makes that move every time you do it. So now you, you kind of study that, and you know he's going to make the move. So you just analyze the tape, and uh, you find his faults, and then you take advantage of him if possible. And um, so the mitts are, again, a great tool, and um, it's probably the best thing I do in, in training is mitt work. Uh, I've caught everybody in the world. I mean, I've caught... The Klitschko brothers, uh, Justin Fortune, a great puncher, Mike Tyson, a great puncher, you know, Manny Pacquiao, great speed. And uh, the, it's, again, it's, it's what I do. Tyson thought I was too small to catch him, and he had somebody else do it for a while, and I was sitting there watching, and the guy couldn't catch uh, a cold. But uh, so I, I put the mitts on, and I said, Mike, let's go to work. And uh, he really fell in love with the, the, my mitt work. And, uh, he even got mad at me one day, I think, and he missed the mitt and hit me a right hook in the chin. Almost knocked me out, but I didn't go down. But uh, <laughs> he hurt me bad. But uh, today, don't hit me. <laughs> so today we're going we're gonna to go through some mitt work, and I'm going to teach you a little bit of combinations and um, some moves that Eddie, Eddie taught me that are very, very, very um, precise and calculated moves and not something too easy, though, it, again. And we'll, we'll get into that as, as I show you. But um, combinations are a key to boxing. But then um, every time you throw a combination, though, you've got to be ready for the guy's retaliation because he's going to punch back. I mean, so this is, you know, when you throw a certain combination, there's a certain counter punch for every, for every punch. But then you've got to counter their, their attack also. So it's, um, again, it's complicated. Um, a, a little bit, but it's uh, but it's also in a, it can be in a simple way if you just kind of take your time and think about what you're doing. Okay, all right, let's go to work. All right. Okay, now 
First punch we're going we're to work on is the left jab. And again, it's the most important punch in boxing because without the left jab, you've got nothing. If the left jab doesn't get your distance and get um, your, your, your range, uh, you know, nothing else will. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's a punch that's, I've seen it win world titles. I saw Larry Holmes just about win the world title with his left jab. Virgil Hill, another one, just a great jab. It's a great weapon out there. And uh, again, it's, uh, I think it's the best punch in boxing because it can control a fight. And uh, let's go. Now, when you, when, when you throw the left jab, of course, it's up real nice and you want to just step in with the shot and turn it over and ca catch it right there. Now, see, my chin's protected by my shoulder, and when the jab lands, I get it right back like a piston. Bang, bang, right, right back to where it came from. Again, I see a lot of people, sometimes they throw a left jab and they bring it back a little bit low. They're, they're open for the right-hand counter shot. They, so that hand is very important to get that right back to your face. Give me the left jab. Again, 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 again. Good. All right. Now, from... From this position, stay in the position. Now she's landing a uh, real good left jab here, right there. And now a good punch right after the jab is the right hand. As that's coming back, there you go, good. Just give me one, two, one, two, one, two. Right hand, nice and short. Let me see it again, again. Now with, with the right hand, of course, you want to pivot off the back foot. Okay, you're not just pivoting for show, okay? You're not just pivoting. You're driving, you're pushing off the floor, bang, right there, like, like Eddie told me, like, like, like you're stepping on a cigarette or you, you're swashing a bug. He says, you know, you're driving off the back foot. You're not just pivoting for show again. You're driving, you're pushing off the floor, and this will get you maximum power in the right hand, okay? Because if you hit me with just your arm punch, you know, your arm weighs 10 pounds, it's not going to hurt me. When you hit me with your body weight, when you get your, your, your toe, your hip, your shoulder right through, you hit with all your body weight, it'll, they're going to they're, they're gonna pay attention to it. Okay? So give me the one-two. Good girl, again. Now get right back in position after that. Don't stay out there. One-two. There you go. Good job. Again. So after she throws the one-two, if she lands that shot there, my counter, of course, on, on, on the right hand is a left hook. So she throws a one, two, boom, I'm going to try to counter there. So she better get that hand back quickly or be in position to go under my hook. And that's why I say balance is a key, because if, if she's in position, she, she should be able to go under the punch with no problem. So one, two, go under my hook. Good. Now it puts her right in position to hit me with the right hand right over the, right over the top. Good. When you make somebody miss that badly, one, two, bang, there you go. And it's a great counter shot, okay? And again, uh, I'm countering her right hand, but she's countering my left hook. So this is, there's always a counter to every day. Every time you throw a punch, you make an opening for the opponent, okay? So um, th there's always that, that factor that you, you actually know that if you throw one, two, my counter is usually going to be usually going to be the left hook. It won't, it won't, you won't find it on the right-hand side that often. So the one-two, it's natural for me to hook and natural for her to come up with the counter right hand. Let's do it again. Right away, quick. Again. Good again. Good girl. Watch your mouth. There you go. So now give me a one-two left hook. Good again. Again, that's a nice short left hook she has here. And my counter on the left, if she ends the left hook, again, it's going to be the right hand. So she has to be ready to go under my right hand, okay? Boom. And then she's got her opening there to my body or to my chin. Again, um, when, she, when she finished the combination with the left hook, my counter is 90% of the time is going to be the right hand. And... That's why it's, uh, the more experienced fighters, you see, uh, it's like when I used to box with Alex Aguero when he was his sparring partner. I mean, I used to tell Eddie, I says, he knows what I'm going to throw before I do. You know, I throw a combination at him, and then he'd make everything miss. And I, I, it's just I was amazed 
at how, how easily he made me miss. And I was an 18-year-old, young, aggressive kid. And the thing was, because um, I, I was very excited and young, and he had a lot of experience. So, but if you stop to think about it, if, if you end with a certain punch, you kind of know where the counter is going to be. I mean, it's pretty good. If she ends with the right hand, 90% of the time, my counter is going to be on the left side. You just got to slow down a little bit and just think about this, you know. And if she finishes with the, with the left hook, right there, 90% of the time, my counter is going to be in the, on the right side. And I think that's what makes the difference between a good fighter and a great fighter is that these great fighters, they can make those moves that are not uh, the 90%. They, they, they can make the moves that are the 10%. And like a guy like James Tony, who I train, you know, he's just a gifted guy. I mean, like when, when James says, he says, you know, all you guys have to train. I was born to fight. And you know what? I think it's true. You know, I mean, he's such a talented guy. I mean, he has so much talent and natural motion. I mean, the, th the moves that he makes, you really can't teach. He's just natural. And I, again, I think that James was born to fight. He's such a good athlete. And then the thing was, like, but I get a guy like Manny Pacquiao, who's just very explosive. And when I first got Pacquiao, he, he had no boxing skills whatsoever, but he had power and speed. And all we had to do is kind of get him to box a little bit and use his technique a little bit more. And uh, it's, it's getting better all the time. But it, again, with the Morales fight, he, uh, he didn't do as well as I thought he would do. Um, he got away from the game plan, and uh, I couldn't get him back on track. But th that's part of the job of being a trainer, of course. And um, you know, because I didn't get him back on track, I'll take some of the blame of that loss. And when we fight the rematch, um, it, I don't think it will happen again. At least, um, well, I, I'll use all my efforts not to make it happen again, that's for sure. So um, now, as a trainer, um, I see a lot of guys catching with the, with the mitts, OK? And I see some good things, and I see some bad things. you know. And again, I'm not a hard-headed guy where I don't think I can't learn. So if I see someone make some good moves on a mitt, I'll, uh, I will copy them a little bit if I like, if I like it. And I'll, I'll go talk to them, and I'll understand the meaning behind it. Because there's always, every punch has a meaning. I mean, uh, it's either the counter shot or setting some up, set, setting a punch up. Is, uh, you know, because again, not the strongest guy is not going to win the fight, the smartest guy is. And that's going to happen every time in boxing because, you know, some people think it's two dummies out there swinging at each other, but, you know, the sweet science is more complicated than, uh, I think, anything in life, you know. And, um, again, what, but some, sometimes I see trainers with the mitts, though, they catch a little bit too aggressively and they reach for punches and they come out a little bit too far. Like, throw a jab at me. See, I catch it right at the end of the punch. I get a little bit of a resistance, I just catch it a little bit. You don't want to come out and catch the punch out here because you've got to let them come to the target, okay? Because, well, every time you punch a person, if he brings his chin to you, well, you're going to have a field day, but that's not going to happen, you know? So everything you do on the mitts should be, in my opinion, should be relevant to boxing, okay? There's nothing I do in this ring with mitts on that is not relevant to boxing, okay? I see guys get real fancy out there behind the back and under the legs and crazy stuff, and they put a real good show on and stuff like this, but it's bullshit, okay? It's not relevant to boxing, okay? It's not what happens in a fight. And everything I do in here on the mitts is relevant to boxing. There's nothing I do that's not. Every move has a counter also. So, um, again, don't, don't come out there and bang with, with your fighter and reach too much with the mitts. It's a mistake. Let them come to the target, okay? Just like it's a real fight. Make it more realistic, okay? You don't want to catch too widely, okay? Because if you're in the right position, if your foot, your lead foot's pointing between my legs and mine and you, we're right in the right position, your target is going to be always to your center, okay? I mean, you're not jabbing out here and over here. It's to your center, okay? And you can use the mirror a lot in boxing for that also. Because if you shadow boxing, which a lot of people don't think is really relevant to boxing, because I see people, uh, you know, it looks funny shadow boxing. It's not right. 
but it's what you know it, it helps because the mirror doesn't lie to you okay so if you're working in the mirror you're punching your center is always the target your chin okay so th on the mitts you can't have it i see guys catching out here like one two like you know who are you fighting it's the guy got a big head i guess but it's not really relevant to boxing you catch close to your face okay and that where the target should be. That's why sometimes I get hit, you know, and um, I don't like getting hit, but it's, you know, going into camp with Mike Tyson, I said, I'm going to start catching this guy. And I know he's aggressive and, you know, he's, uh, he gets on a roll sometimes and he's, he's, he's very strong and so forth. So I, you know what, I, going into that, that, that training camp, I said, you know what, I know I'm going to get hit at least once in this camp. And it did happen once. And uh, Mike promised me it wouldn't happen again, so I was glad that didn't happen. So, but uh, again, I catch close. I get hit sometimes. You know, but I got to make it real. It's got to be. It's got to be real in here because when she's in a fight, it's real, okay. And I'm going to prepare her for that. And that's what this training is all about. So, you know, when I catch a jab. Yeah, you know, she basically throws it right at my chin, and I just pick it off. Check, catch, quick. Then a one-two, one-two, one-two. It's right, it's right here to center where the target's supposed to be. Okay, and one-two hook. Again, get it back. That's it. One-two hook right hand. Again, again. Jab, jab, jab. Two. Two jab right hand. Again. Pivot in the right hand. Right hand. Pivot. Turn it. Right hand, left hook. Right hand behind that. Again. Good job. Okay, so she only hit me once in that little uh, uh, combination. But the thing is, that's what it's about, okay? I mean, if as a trainer, if you get hit once in a while, it's part of life, all right? The thing is, Combinations, very good. Again, um, we, we, we all know we're professionals. We know what combinations are, and we know head movement after combination is very important. And coming into a combination also, you need a little bit of head movement. You know, you just don't want to walk to a person with a stiff right there. You want to, right here, these, the little bend here, like shock absorbers, okay? So if I do get hit with a punch, I can roll with it or ride with it, okay? I don't get hit stiff-legged. If I get hit stiff like that, I'm going to end up right in my and that's where that's where you don't want to be. But it's right here, nice balance, right there, and she ready. We're both ready to fire at each other or to make the punch miss. Okay, and that's where the position you got to be into. So if I throw a left hook here to the body, now you think about it. If I throw a left hook to the body, position-wise, I really am not in position to throw a right hand. So it's really, let's, you know, again, let's make it simple, okay? If I throw a left hook to the body, 90% of the time I'm going to throw a left hook to the head behind it. You should, and with experience, you'll know that, okay? Like when Alexa Aguayo, when he was blocking all my shots and he knew what I was going to throw before I did, and I thought it was amazing at that time, but again, he had been in the ring so much, he was used to it, and he saw it so many times, he knew it was going to come. And I was just a young kid, but then... You know, I was a little bit too aggressive. And, but if you sit down and think about it, that's why he, on George Foreman's comeback, he, so, he did so well because, I mean, he was calm in there. I mean, this guy, you know, was, he's 45, 50 years old and knocking out, knocking out young guys, you know. And uh, it was because he saw everything happening and he didn't, it didn't rattle him at all. He was comfortable with it. He's been in there so much. He, there was nothing he hadn't seen before. Yeah. So if I throw a left hook to the body, 90% of the time I'm going to put my second hook to the head. And you, Francesca, if you think about it, you'll know that. And you just go under that shot and make it miss. Make it simple, right? Bang, bang. And then you've got the counter right hand right on my chin. And again, let's do it. Right hand. Nice and short. Very good. Again. Um, on punches like that, it was a beautiful right hand because it was so short. And, and what fighters make a mistake sometimes of reaching for, for, for punches, okay? Now, if you throw a jab at me here, in the right hand here, now make sure you pivot in the right hand. So that's a nice short right hand. But sometimes people get a little anxious and they start throwing the right hand a little bit long. 
And when you throw a right, uh, a right hand long at me, I'm going to have time to counter the shot. Okay? The thing is, a six inch right hand is the best right hand. It's, you know, you're right in position, the jab gets you there. You land that six inch right hand right there from, you, from there to there, right through, the, right through the target. There you go. Right there. It's a, it's a beautiful shot. And it's, that's a shot that will knock somebody out. Something that's short and they don't see it coming. Because if you throw a long right hand, I'll have time to see it coming. I'll roll with it. I'll pull away from it, or I'll step away. Uh, but I'll do something to counter, counter that shot where I won't get. It won't knock me out. And the, the shots that knock people out are the shots that they don't see coming. So that's why you want to go with short, crisp combinations. Boxing's got you covered with more action-packed videos to get you in the best condition of your life. Featuring Danny Campbell, Michael Rutherford, Jeff Bennett, Russ Anberg, Justin Fortune, and Freddie Roach. They'll put you through the paces to show you everything you need to know to improve your speed, strength, agility, and stamina. How to wrap hands, hitting the heavy bag, medicine ball, attaining the edge of speed, interval training, punching at angles, advanced techniques, explosive speed and power, mastering the basics, punch bed secrets, getting bigger and Stronger, dynamic speed and thrust, counter punching, working the corner, defensive skills and drills, body punching, losing weight, cross training, basic and advanced boxing techniques, punching back training, and more. Get only the ones you want or get maximum impact with the entire series. Get the secrets of over 80 years of combined boxing and physical training experience in one action batch video series. Where do you get it? Exclusively at titleboxing.com. Titleboxing.com. If we don't have it, you don't need it. From your shoulder, okay, bang, right through me. You use your body weight behind the shot. The arm only delivers the shot. Use your body weight. See your target. See your target. Again. Good. Two. 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 So sometimes when you're working the mitts like this, so you let them come to you and you see how they're working on their offensive side, but then if you have an opponent that's aggressive and you know that, then I will go to her a lot and make you back up. So again, if you know your opponent, you can, you can emulate them and, and work both ways. But if you don't know your opponent, again, sometimes you work forward, sometimes backwards, side to side. It's all necessary to work all ends of boxing, okay? Again, one, two. One, two. One, two under my hook. Okay, right away. One, two. Hook behind that. No, one, two. Again. Now, when you're throwing a punch at a fighter, okay, as a trainer, don't go over the head on purpose. Throw it at their chin. It's because it's real. All right, she, you know, her opponent's not going to throw over her head. So I go for the target, okay? So when she throws a one-two at me, I'm going to, if she doesn't go under, she's going to get hit. Just plain and simple, okay? She, uh, um, she knows it's coming, so make the move correctly, okay? One-two, right away. Don't hesitate. As soon as you go under, go the way. Three back. One-two, three back. Good job. Good. Okay. Don't get behind me. Stay. Right foot. Good. Two. Two to your right hand. Two to your right hand. One, two. One, two, hook right hand. One, two, left hook right hand. Again. Get it back. Good job. So that's basically how I work the mitts. And uh, very good. Okay, be careful sometimes about getting too square. Okay, again, you see the mistakes they're making, 
And you see the positive side also. And again, you work on the weaknesses though, if you can. Push on that, okay? So, very good work. And uh, again, I'll show you one more move before we go here. Now, Virgil Hill's favorite move, okay? And Virgil was my first world champion. I mean, I was 27 years old. And he's my first fighter, my first world champion. And he knocked out Leslie Stewart in the fourth round in Lake City. He was a, a great night of my life. And uh, how he knocked him out was great. He set it up again. He sucked him in, you gotta suck him in a little bit as he dropped the left hand a little bit. So we'll have me do it first. Okay. And it's another counter shot. Okay, Eddie's shot, again, was a roll with the right uppercut. Lucy's shot was a roll with the body shot. Virgil's favorite shot was the left hook over the right hand to the temple. It's a great shot. Again, he drops in here. The right hand was coming at me, at him, straight again and he, he landed the left hook. It's a timing shot, it's perfectly timed, but you've got to see it, okay? And the thing is, uh, in boxing, you've got to have good sight. I mean, that, that's very important. If you see what's happening in front of you, don't take your eye off your opponent. Be focused, okay? Be wide-eyed and see everything, okay? I mean, because like, I know some people say, look at their feet, look at their hands, look at their eyes. I think it's a whole, look at their shoulders. It's a whole general picture. Um, I'm experienced enough to see everything, okay? From this position, I can see when she moves her feet, her hands, her eyes, whatever she moves, okay? But the thing is, uh, when she picks her foot up to come to me, I know it, I see it, okay? I, I, it's not, I don't think you should just stare at one thing. In my, in my book, you see the general picture, okay? But it's very important to stay focused on that picture, okay? So if, you know, she, I see her pick that foot up, I know she's coming with a jab usually. Again, these, these, again, don't make it too complicated, okay? You know, when the jab's coming, you, you see her step in with it, okay? And if she doesn't step with the jab and she reaches with that, it puts herself in a little bit of trouble with the overhand right, I, I would land. And again, it's, it's complicated, but it's really not, though. Just think about it, okay? Just settle down and don't, don't get flustered, okay? And I know it's hard to do. As a young kid, I remember boxing in the Junior Olympics. After three rounds, I was so tired, and I, says, I said to my dad, I says, you know, how am I going to go 15 rounds when, I'm, when I get you know, ready for world title fight, punch fights and stuff like this? I'm so tired after three rounds. But you'll get comfortable in the ring the more time you spend there. It, it, it's just part of life. The more time, the more time you, that's why my fighters in wild card, my professionals that are experienced, they box on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because I don't think sparring every day is good for them. Because I don't believe in the fighter taking beatings every day and, and, and just taking too many shots. And I don't believe in getting shape you don't get in shape by sparring. You get in shape from your road, your road work and all the exercises that we do that Justin does. As you can see, that's where our condition comes from. Sparring should be for timing, accuracy, and sharpness. Okay. So my pros, they don't box every day. They box three days a week. The, the Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday are strategy day, middays, pretty much. So we go through that, uh, and you know, we see what they did the day before, the mistakes they made, and we improve that the next day with the mitts and the mistakes they're making, and we we show them why and how to counter the shot. So the thing is. So you get a, you, you're going to get a general picture of the person, a whole picture. You, you, and again, you want to be wide-eyed and you want to see things. And here, like I have a tendency to, to square off, like you said. Yeah. So what, now, what kind of a when 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 you just, when you when you do that, when you get square like that, not only are you a big target, okay, but you're cheating your right hand. You've got a good right hand, yes, but from this position, you're pushing it, okay. You, you, you're pushing the right hand because the shoulder is already halfway there. From this position, now you get the rotation of your body and you can hit with your full body weight. It will be a hell of a lot of difference if we're punching with the body weight and just her arm weight and so forth. So in that position there, so after you get a tendency to throw in the right hand and bring the hand back but not bring the shoulder back. Make sure you bring that shoulder back and get back on cue. Okay? Very important. All right? So again, we'll get back to it.
So Virgil's favorite move, after I get off track a little bit there, but uh, Virgil's favorite move was the, you drop his left hand, you throw the right hand, and right over the top, right there in the chin. All right? So again, you suck me in a little bit here. It's a timing shot, and that, yes, and as, I, as you pull, boom, the weight's in the back foot. Okay, remember, you don't come up high, stay down low, weight's in the back foot, and it's a great counter shot over the top. Boom. Good. You hit a guy in the chin like that, he didn't see the punch coming. When he knocked, he knocked Leslie Stewart out, it was, uh, it was a great night for Virgil. That was exactly how he did it. Just that left hook over the top. It, it's just, and again, it's a natural move for Virgil. It's something that he does automatically. It's just uh, he's perfected it. It's just like it's uh, if you if you throw a right hand at Virgil, he's going to throw the hook at you. I mean, it's plain and simple. And probably a mistake a little bit that he does that every time though, because he should vary it a little bit. And uh, his last fight, we we talked about that, but he still has that little bit of a habit. So. Um, but, you know, he's a multi-time world champion and a great fighter and a good guy. So, you know, we went through some, some, some of the advanced moves, advanced counter shots today. Full work, always on balance. Remember, always do, don't, don't be a big target. Keep your stance nice and balanced. And remember, don't cross your feet. You know, if you're moving to your left, Left foot first, you're moving to your right, right foot first, you're moving back, right foot. We never want to step and end up here because if we get stuck here, we're, we get hit by a shot, we're going to get knocked on our ass for no reason other than being off balance. And then it's going to give him a two point round, and you've got to win two more rounds to catch up, to just to get even. And that should never happen in boxing, okay? Not at this level, at the advanced level of boxing. All right, we don't make mistakes like that. And uh, the thing is, it's just good habits, you know, keep practicing, good habits, work hard, and again, good things will happen. And, uh, you know, if you're a, you're a young guy coming up and so forth, just uh, keep working and, uh, you know, hard work pays off. Um, that's, that's what champion's about. I've always believed that there's talented guys out there Natural ability, have all talent in the world, but they're a little bit lazy. There's guys out there that work hard, maybe don't have a talent, but then you get the guy with the talent and the hard work. Those are the world champions. And, uh, you know, I couldn't achieve that myself in my career. I came up a little bit short. Uh, sure, I'm disappointed. I didn't achieve my goal. A little bit. I had a little bit of, yeah, it bothers me a little bit, but I wish I could have been better. But I, I knew I did my best, and I gave 100%. And that's all you can do. Give 100%, work hard. Again, boxing's a hard game. Don't, you know, if you want to have fun, go play checkers or something like that, you know. Yeah. But, um, you know, this is serious. This is a hard game. If you choose it, deal with it. You know, it's just like a woman fighter. You know, when I first tried to uh, start training Lucia, I wasn't sure. You know, I'm training a girl in a man's sport. And I, you know, but her work ethic was so good that I couldn't deny her. She worked so hard. She worked harder than some of my world champions, you know, and I just said, hey, you know, this, this girl deserves a shot. I mean, I'm not, but she gets treated the same as the boys, so, you know, it's because if you choose it, you deal with it, okay? Give me a one, two, slip. Boom, you know, I still like to do one, slip, like that. One, slip, slip.